question is, what does the pandemic teach? Well, welcome and thank you for joining us. I am here via Zoom with our Divisional Dean of the Humanities at Yale, Catherine Lofton. Katie Lofton, I should say, is also the author of two books and myriad articles around religiosity in unexpected places in American life, let's put it that way, including the books Oprah and Consuming Religion, and also a professor of religious studies and American studies. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I've been eager to talk to you because this is a moment for really thinking about meaning and how people make meaning. Um, and I would love to hear your reflections on that. I was reminded as I was preparing for this discussion, I was thinking about something that Paul Fussell once said about World War II. He said, if the war didn't kill you, it was get you thinking. And I feel that way about the pandemic. And so I'm just eager to hear your reflections. I mean, you've been out in the world more than most people I know um, because of the work that you do. You've been in contact with a lot of people. You've been on your bicycle out and around town between home and the office. You've seen the world in ways that many of us have not as we've been on lockdown. But you're also someone who's thought a lot about how human beings make meaning. So I would just love to hear, we can start with your general reflections on the pandemic and this moment, and then we can take it from there. I find myself splitting even more than normal between many different possible vantages to see things from. And because I'm an administrator, those vantages are louder to me than they would be if I was just in my nerd place. And when I'm in my nerd life, I've been doing a collaborative project with colleagues at uh, Notre Dame, University of Michigan, and the University of Chicago with NORC and AP doing surveys about religious reactions to the crisis, which I'll get into. But so one part of me has been asking with my colleagues questions to people surveyed about who they think is responsible for the crisis, how it's affect their religious behavior. So we're getting back information on both theodicy and on sociology of religion. So the nerd person is getting all kinds of interesting information that doesn't really contest with our normal assumptions, but does highlight just the existential threat of the moment. But as a person who does move around this particular city, which is so writ with pretty significant inequality, one is also struck by who needs to be on the streets and who does not, who has, in some sense, the privilege, however complicated, of being quarantined and who does not. And just the various levels of who has the right to worry about how protected they are. And someday a great essay will be written about mask wearing and who thinks they must and who doesn't and who's the most frightened of being called out for not wearing masks, who is the most frightened that if they don't, they'll contract something and the racial and class politics of that. So in all of it, it, it feels both that everything in our late capitalist moment is being excessively highlighted. My own instinct as a scholar is to say nothing has been illuminated we didn't know. It's just perhaps more people now see it than before, which is, I think, positive political moment, but maybe it also kind of with a lot of grief in my heart in some instances too late. So that if you have the mayor of New York finally changing his policing practices, but just because he knows he can't control the police, that for me feels like a moment of both good, but also disturbing. Where are we now where we don't even know what the law is? So that's a very general set of reactions, but it's just to outline my own sense that the anthropology of the everyday seems to highlight things that scholars have been yelling about for years. And as a right. scholar, I think we're just see, getting more and more data back about how dispiriting and frightening this moment is for people. Yeah. 